Tomorrow marks the second annual Doctor Who Comics Day. Comic book shops around the world are getting involved. There'll be new ranges on sale, signings and exclusive variant covers up for grabs too. We paid a visit to Titan's headquarters to speak to Doctor Who range editor Andrew James to find out what's on offer. So, first up, what is Doctor Who Comics Day? So Doctor Who Comics Day is sort of an international celebration of both Doctor Who and comics. It's kind of an excuse to um, get comic stores all over the world to throw small parties, get cosplayers in, generally uh, just have fun with the brand and with the comics and the fact that there are Doctor Who fans all over the world and they really want to celebrate their passion essentially. On Saturday the 15th of August people can go into their local comic book store, pick up uh, the linchpin of the event which is the first issue of our Doctor Who event series for 2015. Uh, four Doctors, written by Paul Cornell with art by Neil Edwards and colours by Avin Nunes. Fantastic. Comic store owners will be there to kind of guide them through the many titles that we got and sort of say this is a great jumping on point, try this out. Uh, but yeah, there'll be sort of activities, quizzes, all that kind of stuff. So it's, a, it's just a, a great excuse for a party and it's a way of also celebrating and thanking the retailers and readers who've been so supportive of us over basically our first year in, in printing Doctor Who comics. So, what can you tell us about Paul Cornell's Four Doctors? Well, uh, it's the first ever crossover between Doctors 10, 11 and 12 in any medium. 10 is incredibly suspicious of 12 because he doesn't believe that he should actually exist. You know, from his perspective, mm. this man should not be here. Uh, Eleven is sort of relieved to find out that he does actually carry on going. So he's almost the peacemaker in between 10 and 12 while they're at each other's throats. Uh, 10 calls him uh, famously an abomination to 12 and 12 is kind of like a Dalek word. Nice. And if you know anything about Doctor Who since 2005, you'll have an absolute blast with it. Crystal! Oh, sorry. This is really rather good. But with all these comics, where on Gallifrey does one start? Luckily for us, TV presenter, Doctor Who fan and comic book enthusiast Chris Johnson is on hand to help us out. Man, we got spoiled in 2013, didn't we? Big Finish's extravaganza, The Light at the End, a shiny new Peter Capaldi to look forward to, and some television special called The Day of the Doctor or whatever. You might have heard of it. But also, we were treated to a 12-issue event from IDW called Prisoners of Time, featuring the first 11 incarnations of the Doctor being pursued throughout history alongside his companions by a mysterious figure hell-bent on revenge. With every issue, we found out a little bit more about who this person could be, and hopefully, the Doctor did two highlights. The Eighth Doctor reunites with Grace. The Eleventh Doctor faces off against the Anthony Ainley incarnation of the Master. The Fourth Doctor encounters the Jadoon. The Tenth Doctor fights the Quarks. And Frobisher's in it. And I absolutely love Frobisher. Doctor Who, the Ninth Doctor. Hot on the heels of their three ongoing Doctor Who titles, the mighty team at Titan bring us the Ninth Doctor limited series. This is a sheer delight to read, bringing back to life one of the most popular, if short-lived, TARDIS trios in Doctor Who history in a brand new story. The time war may have ended, but the Doctor has plenty of work to do yet. Kevin Scott captures the characters' voices perfectly in this story that follows on directly from the events of The Doctor Dances back in series one. With artwork by Blair Shedd and Rachel Stott bringing these characters back to glorious life, it's amazing to finally see the ninth Doctor, my Doctor, Rose Tyler and Captain Jack Harkness in a brand new story that's still going on to this day. Whatever Doctor Who graphic novel takes your fancy, whichever one grabs your eye, give it a try. They're easy to leap into, they're tons of fun, and what's more, it's more Doctor Who in your life. When is that a bad thing? If you don't mind, I'm going to get back to reading my, uh, my comics. So. Show yourself out. Doctor Who comics wouldn't be complete without the incredible artwork, and some fans have made the leap from making fan art to working on the comics themselves. Hi, my name is Rachel Stott, I'm a comic book artist and I draw Doctor Who. Um, so far I've done a little bit of 9, a little bit of 10, and then this year, well, starting from next year, going to be drawing the 12th Doctor. I mean, I'd been hired because the publishers had seen some of my um, 12th Doctor fan art on like Tumblr and Twitter and things like this and like being able to draw something and knowing it was just, like official uh, and it was going to be on the front cover of a Doctor Who comic book was really, really, really exciting. I work digitally, so basically I'll receive a script that looks like a movie script into my email inbox uh, and then, yeah, read it, figure out how you want the story to go because most of the time it just says like dialogue and then 
a little bit about what the character should be doing in each panel and things. And then you just draw it out on the tablet like you would um, with paper or pen. So you just sketch it out using blue for the pencil lines and then sort of ink over the top of it. And there you go. And then it gets sent off to another person who colours it. Someone else after that who then puts the dialogue, like the word balloons, onto the top of it. And then, yeah, it gets printed out and becomes a beautiful comic book. I was a Doctor Who fan before starting drawing the books. Uh, I've been watching it ever since Christopher Eccleston's first episode. And ever since then, I've literally been hooked on it. Um, it's probably my favourite TV show. I absolutely adore it. So the fact that I get to draw it is slightly surreal and really, really fantastic. My advice to budding artists and comic book artists is just to draw as much as you can, uh, draw anything and everything, uh, draw from life especially because that's going to be really good practice for the future. Uh, for budding Doctor Who artists, saying drawing from life doesn't mean follow Peter Capaldi and Jenna Coleman around and draw them all the time because that's not cool, um, but you know if you draw like your living room the same rules are going to apply as to when you draw a spaceship. It's all just perspective and composition and things like this, so yeah just practice as much as you can and have have passion for it as well because if you draw whatever you think you're meant to draw it's going to come out terrible because your heart's not going to be in it so draw whatever comes to you and whatever you want to and then it will turn out fantastic or if it turns out terrible then you know what to do next time to improve it and yeah just get better and better and better um, until I can read your comic books and then that'll be great. <laughs> If you have anything you'd like to share with us, email us at dwthefanshow at bbc.com or tweet us at dwthefanshow. And don't forget to check out our favourite clips in this week's YouTube annotation attack. <laughs>